I love drawing and painting cats. They're just so much fun to do. I love painting and here cats. Here is our inspiration image, this beautiful Maine Coon cat. And here is our quick rough draft or our practice sketch. Departure from normal practice and to save my watercolor paper, I actually draw this out on tracing paper. I took this photo of my friend's cat, and so if you want, you can even print out the photo and trace from it. So tracing definitely reduces the pressure if you're feeling nervous about your drawing. I do a fairly loose drawing, and then I fine tune it once it's on the good watercolor paper. So I spend a fair bit of time on the drawing, and because it's a sideways view, I want this line and the eye line and the nose line to be parallel, like so. Of course, I'll erase these lines in a few minutes. So once I'm happy with my drawing, I go ahead and I erase most of the pencil line. So this subject matter enables us to practice a lot of watercolor techniques, including the very soft bleeding, which is where we'll start. You'll notice that she has this lovely undercoating of amber, so we'll begin with a yellow ochre wash. So I mix up a, a puddle of my yellow ochre, number 44. With clean water, I'm just going to paint basically all over her. And you can see where I'm painting, you can see the light shining on it and I stop about a millimeter around her eyes. And you want to put the yellow ochre on while the water is still glistening and I'm using a number 10 brush. And you can see how nicely the paint is just flowing into that water. Make it nice and soft around the muzzle. We'll leave this interior blank, this ear interior blank. And that gives us just a beautiful starting point. I'm going to rim her ear. Now we'll take a tiny bit of uh, our Van Dyke Brown, number 47, and start to bleed a little bit in. Now I take advantage of the fact that the paint is still wet to move a little bit into the ear and also to soften around the muzzle and bring the paint up to the eyes. And now, annoyingly, we have to let it dry. So at this stage, your cat is well on the way to being finished. I waited about 20 minutes and now I'm continuing. I'm painting in the interior of her ear with this nice pink. Just blot that, make it a little bit paler. And with the same color, this yellow ochre mixed with red, I'm going to paint in her nose leather, this little triangle down here. And while that's still wet, we'll put a tiny bit of blue in, just to give it a little bit of shading and a little bit of character. I take a little bit of my indispensable periwinkle or lavender 61 and I just bleed a little bit into the ear and I put a tiny bit of shadow underneath her chin and we'll bring this out just to suggest some lovely fluff some lovely fur on Same her chest. Violet, we're going to put some shadow on the side of her face that's behind her nose. And 
And we'll also put a little bit on here on this side of the nose and around the uh, eye. I said violet. I meant, of course, periwinkle. And I'm going to darken up the nose leather one more time. Tiny bit of black into my Van Dyke brown. And I'm going to do this ear nice and dark. I'm going to re-wet this area here on the side of her face and her neck because I want a soft bleed and I'm going to stroke in some more dark. A, a smaller brush like a zero, we're going to go in and do a little bit around the eye. And you want to be careful that you're not putting your hand in the wet paint of the fur. Even though we can't see the other eye really in the photo, I'm going to put just the suggestion of it in with a tiny touch of yellow. Still working on the face, we'll take a dilute mix of that uh, brown and black and just put a little bit of shadow in on the nose on the far side of the nose and on the near side and just where it indentates to. With the same mix you'll describe the nose leather and put in the nostrils. A series of very small, very light little strokes just to suggest the mouth. You can bring it round if you want her to be smiling. With the same black and brown mix, we're going to put in this lovely stripe by her eye. I'm going to rim her ear like this. And with my black brown, I'm going to paint in the pupil. And because the eye is curved, you want to make this also curved. And we'll put in just a suggestion in the other eye too. So in, in painting this, I did what I told you not to do, which is I put my hand in the uh, wet paint and the wet fur around the ear. So I'm going to paint in a background. I'm going to put a background wash in of this dark green. I want to put in a, a little more uh, black in the fur and I want to put in the white of her whiskers, but I'm going to let this So dry. this next bit is strictly optional, but I like the kind of random marks that I get when I paint with a toothbrush for the fur. I wet my old toothbrush. I test it out to make sure it's not too, too wet. I've dipped it in the black and now I just do some marks. And you want to do this very lightly. And if this is the first time you've ever painted with a toothbrush, do please practice on another sheet of paper first. You don't want it to be too wet. And you only want just a little, very light pressure. And finally, back to our white. A, a little white in the corner of the eye. So my model is old and venerable, so I'm just breaking up this rather black spot by putting in some white fur. And make sure that you practice and you knock off all the extra white before you do the whiskers.
just a couple. I turn the page so that I can do them on the other side. And just a couple of whiskers above her eyes, just little light flicks. Of course, you don't have to use a toothbrush. You can use a regular brush. I just like the spontaneity of it. And now your beautiful, beautiful Maine Coon is done. So you now have a beautiful portrait of a Maine Coon. I can't wait to see what you do with this.